This week on Cracked Science, Goop comes to Canada. Heaven help us. Hey, this is Jonathan Jerry, and you're watching the season two premiere of Cracked Science, the show from the McGill Office for Science and Society that separates sense from nonsense on the scientific stage. October 27th is the day that Goop comes to Canada. That's right, Gwyneth Paltrow's pastel-colored empire of feel-goodery will be hosting a sold-out, $400 a ticket, one-day symposium called In Goop Health in Vancouver. This summit has previously been held in a few major American cities and offered attendees aura readings, crystal treatments, and a chance to look like a hospital patient who has to be given oxygen therapy. Now, I could spend 10 minutes making fun of Paltrow herself by playing this clip. Am I alive? Barely. <laughs> or by highlighting her comment on Jimmy Kimmel Live about the fact that she doesn't know what she's talking about. But I want to focus instead on something more pernicious, an unspoken aura that permeates Goop's entire website, and that was crystallized by Elise Lonen, Goop's chief content officer, when she spoke to the National Post recently. Goop's mission is not to debunk established medical knowledge, but to explore the questions that Big Pharma has overlooked, particularly regarding maladies that primarily affect women. It is all too easy to mock the women who lend their trust to a Hollywood actress who is selling them jade eggs to stick up their genitals and a spray to ward off so-called psychic vampires, and to call these women delusional and credulous. What many of these women seem to be seeking is self-empowerment and a sense of control over their health, and Goop, in its most superficial assessment, appears to be giving its customers exactly that. Are you stressed out? Here's a wellness candle. Wondering what to eat? We've got you covered. Riding on an airplane drains your energy? Here's advice written by Gwyneth herself. Jessa Crispin wrote a compelling article for The Baffler called Beyond Goop and Evil, in which she puts goop within the context of Western medical history. She writes, in important respects, it is also an attempt to wrest control and authority back from a medical community that has mistreated women for centuries. Make no mistake, she and others argue that this attempt is backfiring. Goop is an illusion of self-empowerment, but the mistreatment is real. As late as 1987, clinical trials, the crowning achievements of science-based medicine, which allow us to compare two treatments in as objective a fashion as possible, were conducted mostly, and often exclusively, on men. In fact, it was only in 1994 that an American law was implemented requiring researchers funded by the biggest funding agency in the U.S., the NIH, to include women alongside men in clinical studies and look at sex differences in the results. Then there's what happens when a woman goes to see her doctor. While one woman out of every 10 has endometriosis, a debilitating disease that causes painful menstrual cycles and an array of symptoms and health issues, it takes between seven and nine years of, quote, complaining about symptoms to medical professionals, end quote, to be properly diagnosed, according to Endometriosis Network Canada. And there's more. Women are more likely to present with atypical symptoms than men when they have a heart attack and may, to a certain extent, be undertreated. And when it comes to pain, women are, are on average not taken as seriously as men and are more likely to receive a sedative instead of a painkiller when compared to their male counterparts. Here's Ray Paoletta, a senior editor at Inverse, being interviewed about the role Goop plays as a false solution to a real problem. Goop seems to be targeting women who are more often than not failed by um, traditional medicine and um, happen to actually, if you look at research, they wait in emergency rooms longer than men. They're more likely to report um, higher instances of pain but get less treatment for them. So women have legitimate things to be upset about with regard to the medical industry, but Goop is far from some kind of empowering or even helpful resource for them. Nobody can be empowered by false information and it's disgusting and it's horrifying that it's being targeted and basically packaged toward women this way. Dr. Jen Gunter, an actual specialist in women's health and OBGYN, pain medicine physician and outspoken critic of Goop, agrees and told the National Post that using smoke and mirrors to say things that make you happy make you healthier is not fair. You know what this reminds me of? Paul McCartney and Michael Jackson. Step right up, step right up. Come on, ladies and gentlemen, gather around. Let me tell you all about the Mac and Jack Wonder Potion. In the 1800s, there were traveling caravans known as medicine shows. 
They would stop in a town, and a charismatic ringleader would draw the crowd in with hypnotic tales. These shows would feature a wide array of entertainment to further enrapture their audience. But the real purpose of these pop-up shows was to sell snake oil, miraculous potions, liniments, patent medicines, cure-alls for town folks who didn't have science-based medicine because it didn't exist yet. The spectators would get fleeced of their money, and the medicine show would move on to a new town and start again. Some of these crude elixirs would actually work. That's because they contain opium, or alcohol, or, yes, even cocaine. They were unregulated, addictive, and sometimes quite dangerous. The jade egg Goop still sells is porous and can easily carry bacteria inside a woman's vagina. I don't know if it's addictive, but it's certainly risky, and it is essentially unregulated. Goop recently agreed to pay $145,000 in civil penalties to settle a consumer protection lawsuit, which included the jade egg and the health claims Goop made for it. This slap on the wrist and a sustained wave of media pushback against Paltrow's empowerment carnival have resulted in a few changes. Goop hired a couple of people with PhDs in nutrition science, but these same PhD recipients spent years working for a dietary supplement company, Threshold, that participated in the campaign to pass the Dietary Supplement Health and Education Act in the mid-90s, which essentially gave bogus supplements free legal reign in the U.S. Goop has platformed clairvoyance, psychic mediums, even a shaman. That's right, a shaman. They work with Anthony William, who calls himself the medical medium. He tells people what to eat, and he diagnoses their illnesses. He's not a dietitian. He's not a clinician. He is a guy who thinks an angel speaks to him. Ironically, as Dr. Gunter pointed out in her scathing piece about the lawsuit's resolution, the clown car of psychic charlatans embraced by Gwyneth Paltrow apparently failed to predict the lawsuit itself. <laughs> you know, they've got clairvoyance. They sell a thing literally called a medicine bag full of polished pebbles. They have pop-up stores everywhere in the U.S., and they've got their leader telling the New York Times this, 79% of our American customers aren't in New York or Los Angeles. They're in secondary markets. So she's thinking they might take the thing on the road. Jessa Crispin, in her baffler piece, fears we may be regressing to the oral medical tradition of the medieval midwife when it comes to goop, but I don't think we need to go back that far. In the 1800s, there were traveling caravans known as medicine shows. They would stop in a town, and a charismatic ringleader would draw the crowd in with hypnotic tales. These shows would feature a wide array of entertainment to further enrapture their audience. But the real purpose of these pop-up shows was to sell snake oil, miraculous potions, liniments, patent medicines, cure-alls for town folks who didn't have science-based medicine because it didn't exist yet. The spectators would get fleeced of their money, and the medicine show would move on to a new town and start again. Vancouver, you're next. If you're looking for a goop cleanse that actually works, meaning a product that cleanses you of Gwyneth Paltrow's goop, I would recommend Timothy Caulfield's book, Is Gwyneth Paltrow Wrong About Everything? Using an enticing marriage of first-person storytelling and scientific data analysis, health policy expert Caulfield debunks two long-standing illusions, the illusion of celebrity authority and the illusion that you too can be a celebrity. He writes about diets, beauty tips, celebrity dreams, and that famous claim that you can master anything in 10,000 hours. Whereas science books always run the risk of being dry, this one is a blast to read. If you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel, do click that button and ring that bell to get notifications. Don't forget to subscribe to our weekly newsletter by going to mcgill.ca slash OSS. In the meantime, you can follow me on Twitter at Cracked Science and join us next time for science that may or may not be all it's cracked up to be.